Dr. Balsubramanyam, the founder of Swami Vivekananda Youth Movement. As you would know, this institution was started uh, when I was 19, uh, in 1984, basically inspired by the teachings of Swami Vivekananda and his message of national reconstruction. And a set of young, young, and, uh, handful of young men, coming, men and women coming together and doing something constructively for India's progress. Obviously, when you are 19, 20, people who trust you will not be very high. People will think that you do Purgata and the, and the beautiful fantasy, things will not work. So it wasn't very easy. Uh, but like Swamiji says, what sustained was faith in oneself. He says, faith, faith, faith in oneself. And I think in my personal case, that is the message I have for myself. But I believed I could make a difference and I believed that I could sustain what I was doing. And talking to a set of few friends around me, they also shared the same vision and the team could grow. Well, the challenges are most most NGOs, the challenges most NGOs face. First thing is we are fighting in a space which is already overcrowded. And in a context like India where social sector development is principally led by the government, most NGOs take on roles of uh, trying to either be an anti-establishment NGO, fighting against the government, or trying to be a supplanting NGO, replacing the government itself. So while we started off with uh, those kind of ideas of building hospitals and schools and working in areas where government didn't exist, essentially trying to replace government in areas where they are not there anyway. Gradually we learned that you really can't supplant, you can only supplement. And so we changed, we evolved and now we are in partnership with government, corporate and communities in working towards their own development. So challenges were, challenges were in transitioning, like from being a service provider where you run your own hospitals and schools, to slowly transitioning into becoming a service enabler where you try to get the government hospital to work better, trying to get the communities to become more empowered and independent trying to be a watchdog of government which meant that you take on certain roles which are not liked by government. We also had challenges like uh, challenges of finances where uh, it's always never an easy time to get mobilized resources. Right now we are heavily cash trapped. The total economy itself is not very bright. We are also in debt. So very few NGOs actually uh, look at market uh, lending, borrowings and we have done that exactly that. We actually got into market borrowing from nationalized banks and we are hoping that that will be a new way of uh, resource mobilization. We also have a challenge of uh, getting in highly qualified people because as NGOs, most of us suffer from inability to pay well. Well, Today's younger generation have so many opportunities that for them, social development is also a career. It's not It's not the passion or the kind of uh, uh, the drivers that drove people like us no longer drives the younger generation today. So they, if they were coming to an organization like SPYM, they will possibly look at market scales of salary as compared to a corporate sector of the government. And since we can't pay well, you all you, you only get uh, monkeys if you pay peanuts. So that's exactly what is the challenge of NGOs also. Most NGOs have and we also have. So we are trying to become better and better at it. And we also have uh, organizational problems like uh, any NGO which grows will always be challenged with. We work across Karnataka, we have centers in the US and UK and the responsibility of managing all this is a challenge. The responsibility of finding the second rank leadership is a other challenge which a lot of NGOs have and ours is no exception. So a set of inspired first generation people are still running the NGO. I think at some point of time we need to move towards, uh, though I have formally laid on all office, but uh, the team has to slowly transition to getting younger people into it and take hand over responsibilities. We are a huge institution now and so we need to look at all that. So evolving and re-understanding re our own vision and mission was a challenge constantly challenging ourselves to redefine it, they have progressed well in that direction. Finding finances, finding qualified HR and uh, organizational management as we grow. There are very few challenges. Along with, you know, when once you're there for 28 years, uh, time comes when uh, people's expectations about your work also grows. So meeting those expectations all the time, every time is also a challenge. Looking back, would I say I'm satisfied with my life with what I have done? I think I'm more than satisfied. I think. Uh, the greatest joy one can ever get is the joy of giving, giving oneself completely. I don't think giving money itself can be give a lot of joy, but giving oneself completely to a cause that one believes in. And that inspiration comes from Vivekananda. And what really inspired me was uh, a message that Tommy gives very strongly. He says the three H. The first H he said is the heart to feel. He says, feel my children, feel, feel for the poor, the ignorant, the downtrodden. And out of this feeling, he expects the next level of head, the next H, which is the head to think. And merely thinking and writing and talking about it also is not going to solve this problem. The third H that Swamiji says are the hands to work. And he called upon the end of this country to actually do all three. Because the one, very few people 
who had such enormous faith in the end that they could actually feel, they could also think through India's problems, find solutions and also actually in, in, act from them and then do it. And that's what inspired me and it continues to inspire generations of people. More and more such young people get into the social sector space. I think change can happen enormously and that's exactly what we need to do. So there's some deep hunger which is troubling them and a lot of young people, whether it's our anti-corruption work or it's our own development work, a lot of young people actually joining us. That's great, uh, positive, encouraging news for India itself. When our future plans are clear, I think we have moved away from being just a service provider to an enabler, to a facilitator. So we work with government, we work with other communities, other NGOs, helping them to do their job better. So now uh, our entire future is planned around what we're doing here at Mysore. What is the Leadership Institute, where we hope to actually build competence of people who have deep seated commitment to nation building. So mere commitment is not enough. So we like to combine commitment to competence. So we run the master's program. We like to build a new generation of social development managers. Like you have MBA for corporate sector. We like to have development managers for the development sector. We like to train other government officials. We like to train corporate people. We like to train NGOs in understanding development, learning to work in partnerships and understand what India needs in the present context today. We also are looking at building leaders. So I, I personally feel my responsibility the way I'm seeing it now is to work towards building a generation of young leaders. Leaders not defined narrowly as people who have followers, but leaders who can actually be enablers of people and themselves and look at constructively contributing to the nation's progress, not just economically, but in every sense of the world. There are a lot of things which inspire people and some of it is, can be readings of Swamiji, some of it are anecdotes that have happened in my own life, small, small changes. Recently, I had uh, 13 of my first generation children who were literally four, five years, two, three year old when I went there first. Uh, the happiest moment for me was uh, I literally carried them to school. And this year, 13 of the young boys uh, came to me and said thank you. And I was wondering why are they thanking me. And all 13 who graduated from our school some seven, eight years ago have been employed by the forest department as watches. And they came back and told me, and, uh, and they went to the interview, and in the interview, when they asked them, the apparent question in the interview was, do you know Dr. Bhaskar Manim? And our young children said, well, we were brought up by him. And all 13 were appointed. And so when you hear something like that, uh, and these are children who have been trained in values, and I'm sure the forest will be safe with them. They're all trained, appointed as forest watchers. You feel extremely inspired that uh, you're seeing some results of the life that you put into. Uh, education is a long process. After investing 20 years on them, you suddenly see it paying off. In so one silent way, it's inspiring. Being a physician, we have any number of examples each day in our lives in a hospital where our existence makes a difference. But beyond that all, I look at my own self and look at how I have progressed, how I, I, I have evolved spiritually and my own inner self and I think, but for the work that I have done, I don't think I could be where I am. And uh, that, that to me is probably the greatest satisfaction I can get. There's a negative incident which inspires me. Whenever I feel frustrated, whenever I feel tired, I always remember something that happened to me in my life in late December 87. I was a very young doctor, highly inspired, thought I can change this world. Never been to an Indian village, always got, got up in Bangalore, lived in Mysore, took my medicine. Suddenly moved into an Indian village and I'm alone and I get a call that the girl is pregnant at around 6.30. So I go to the small hardy called Sani Madana Hadi, a very small tribal call, no road also. At that time, I, my, my ambition was to prove that I'm a doctor to the community because they had to respect me as a doctor. It's only one month since I'd gone into the tribal community. I wanted to establish my relevance as a doctor. There's a 14-year-old child, Madhi was her name, who was in labor. When I went to deliver a baby, she had not delivered it. The, what we call a primary gravid, first pregnancy. And uh, education taught me that it takes 24 hours for a girl in labor to deliver. So I come back to my place where I was staying, a village called Brahmagiri. Next early morning, I went back to see the child again. 14 years old, the child, she's not even a mother. And as I was walking, one elderly lady, a tribal lady called Putama was drawing water in a tube well. She met me and told me, why are you going? The baby got delivered last night. I was very disappointed, crestfallen. I said, no chance to show I'm a doctor, is gone. But I still went to the colony called Sani Martin. I was standing there, I can still remember that scene like a movie in my mind. Small hut, and I was standing outside asking Madhi to bring the child out. She sustainably refused. And after three, four minutes, I was getting irritated. I said, so she was not coming. And after 10 minutes, I thought, hey, nanu, doctor, nanu, ella bit -bit in Haldi, ki, gaur that kind of anger and agitation in my mind. But finally, in that anger, I told her, and what she said next is what 
ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಇಸ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಪಿರೇಷನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮೀ ಶೀ ಬರ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಔಟ್ ಕ್ರೈಂಗ್ ದಯವಿಟ್ಟು ಒಳಗೆ ಬರಬೇಡಿ ನನ್ನ ಮೈ ಮೇಲೆ ಏನೂ ಇಲ್ಲ ಹಾಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ದಿಸ್ ಅ ಫೋರ್ಟೀನ್ ಇಯರ್ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ಟು ಅಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಒನ್ ಸ್ಯಾರಿ ಟು ಬೇರ್ ಶಿ ಡೆಲಿವರ್ಡ್ ಹರ್ ಓನ್ ಬೇಬಿ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ನೈಟ್ ಸಾಯಿಲ್ ದ ಸ್ಯಾರಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆರ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಶ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನೈಟ್ ಬೈ ಅನ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಪುಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಅನ್ ದ ಹಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ವೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅ ಸನ್ ಟು ಕಮ್ ಔಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಸ್ಯಾರಿ ಟು ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ವೇರ್ ಇಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಅಗೇನ್ this is india this is 1987 40 years after independence in a country where we said sita is god durga is god we haven't found a sari for a child like mari who shouldn't have got pregnant at 14 and all so every time i feel frustrated i feel like giving up mari comes into my mind and i say it's for this mari that i need to continue to do what i do and the joy was 5 years ago the child which was born to mari turned 18 and had a first baby in our hospital and was delivered by my wife Oh. and that baby had an imper- imperforate anus that means there's no anus at all and we had a s- surgeon from bangalore a pediatric surgeon from manipal who could never who was completely unaffordable for tribal who actually drove down from bangalore to our hospital that was his great contribution did the surgery that night the child not only saved and lived is actually alive and playing well till 3 4 years old so that's what technology and medicine can do and that's what the fruits of our own work so if one mari got pregnant at 14 her child who studied in our own school that didn't have to get pregnant at Protein. and when she had a baby you would have definitely died that night but actually saved and when these things happen you feel inspired so to me whenever i feel frustrated these are my inspirations what all of us need to understand is uh, working in the development sector or social sector need not just be a emotional commitment or just a passing passion it can be a full lifetime career uh, one can be very professional about it and one can understand that you can lead a normal life like i always look at myself and say what i have given up i have given up nothing I possibly have everybody else possibly I may not be my classmate living in the US or my classmate living in UK or my own classmate in India living a life it is different I chose to live my life differently but I have had all my needs taken care of I, I don't think I have suffered or want of anything well I have never uh, I never had the money I want my classmate might have but I have had everything else that I could ever want it and I think that's the kind of spirit that the space gives now and it's not like 40 years ago when the development space was seen as just Uh, half clad uh, jubba wearing jola uh, bag hakondo card hudkondo hogi uta kelve irutte things have changed uh, we get highly qualified professionals the kind of young interns who come and work with me stand testimony to that and there's in this i wouldn't say it's a luxurious lifestyle but there's enough to lead a decent life and if more and more young people can actually see this as an option in their life i think it's a great positive change for this country itself and let them not believe that this space uh, doesn't have that kind of opportunity Uh, there are a lot of well paying ngos who are paying market salaries what corporates can give there are a lot of a lot of things that the sector is now offering i remember infosys had written to me some two three years ago saying that instead of laying off their excess employees they are offering them a program where they would pay them 50% of their existing salaries and they have to take a year off and come and work with us i have indian so management i i do some teaching there we have students who take the social enterprise course Indian Tour Management offers a formal scholarship support program where after you graduate from IIM, if you choose to go work in an NGO, you have minimum work for three years. IIM Bangalore will pay a salary of fifty thousand per month. The NGO doesn't have to pay anything. No student is taking it. That's also a fact. The last five years, not a single student has taken it. Fifty thousand doesn't even compare to the one crore salaries per year that you can otherwise make. But then the very fact that the institution offers it. and there will be a time when people will start taking it i think it is a good beginning and i'm sure we'll all get it